Welcome to HP Tuner's GM Gen 5 Training Part 22. In this training module, we're going to be exploring our variable cam timing feature. This is going to allow us to retard the cam to get better economy and also better power band out of our engine. So we're going to be exploring all the tables and looking at some log data as well in our VCM scanner to determine if the changes that we're making, if we're doing wide open throttle tuning, are working or not if you don't have a chassis dyno. We're going to have a lot to talk about. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our variable cam control feature within our GM Gen 5 engines. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how the variable cam control feature works, understanding mechanically and electronically what's going on. We're going to take a look at the key tables, the program for the variable cam timing feature, taking a look at how spark timing and fuel is offset when we're running a variable cam control target and actually moving the camshaft. We're going to talk about what we need to do if we've deleted the variable cam control feature. Also, if we've installed a phase limiter feature, these are typical with aftermarket camshafts, so the cam, cam can't rotate as much. And then we're also going to take a look at dialing in the variable cam. What kind of gains can we expect? And when we're dealing with trying to dial this in without a chassis dyno, what can we look for in our data in order to give us an indication if we're getting a power loss or a power gain? So a lot of things to talk about here and unpack. Let's first jump in, let's locate the tables, where we can find the variable cam control feature, and let's talk about what is going on here mechanically, electronically, just to get things started. So jumping in here, I am working with a 2018 Yukon Denali file. Any Gen 5 file will work in order to follow along with what I'm showing here. I'm gonna go up into my engine tab. We're gonna go from under general over here into airflow, and then from airflow here into the variable camshaft tab. In here, we find that we have all of the programming details for making the variable cam control feature work. Now, one thing to note about the way this is set up here, we see both intake and exhaust camshaft. The programming here that GM has used is going to be kind of a, gen a general language across many different types of platforms. So that's going to mean if GM is trying to control a dual overhead cam engine where it has separate intake and exhaust cams that can be actuated with a variable cam control feature, they have these separated from intake and exhaust cam. We'll find that on a GM V8 application, we only have one cam that actuates both intake and exhaust valves. And because we only have one cam, anything related to our variable cam timing for a V8 engine, we'll always refer to it as the intake cam. We can see here camshafts one, and we'll find here, it's just gonna use these programming tables. We're not using anything with our exhaust camshaft. Again, the way the programming language here is structured, this engine control module could be used on an engine that had dual overhead cam that has both camshafts being actuated or controlled through a variable cam feature. And in that case, we'd have camshaft installed two or four. So different applications will have different types of control strategies here, but whether they have a V8 LT engine We'll just be using these values right here and our values over here to determine how we're making the variable cam control feature work. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about the basics of variable cam control. What's going on? How is this actually working? A lot of people are confused on variable cam control feature. So if we go back to a Gen 3 engine and we install a camshaft, aftermarket cam, you're putting the cam in and the cam manufacturer recommends a certain center line to run that cam at. That's gonna allow the intake and exhaust valve opening and closing vents to be where they ground the cam to be proper to make the most power. Well, we would have to use an adjustable cam gear and we'd have to put on a dial indicator uh, measuring our piston position. And we'd also have to put on a degree wheel to figure out all of the movement of the engine, movement of the valves. Uh, we'd also have a dial indicator that would go on our intake and exhaust valve opening and closing. We'd figure out everything where it's at and we would set the adjustable cam gear so that we were following that particular center line so we were getting the intake and exhaust valves opening exactly when the manufacturer was recommending. Now in that situation, that would be known as degreeing the camshaft and that's going to make the cam perform optimally. Now, when we're dealing with now our Gen 5 engines, we're not gonna have a fixed cam gear that's gonna allow us to statically adjust those valve timing events to get everything optimal to get the center line um, proper when, when manufacturer is going to design it. Now we have the ability to dynamically control what's going on with that cam's position, the center line position. We can actually vary that and we can move that cam either advancing it or retarding it. This gives us the advantage of having better fuel economy and better power and a better power band out of our engine. 
GM primarily uses this for economy reasons, but we can see some power gains if we're retaining a stock cam and trying to adjust and tweak some of the variable cam timing. Now, if you've installed an aftermarket cam that has much different specs than stock, you're gonna have to go in and uh, deal with probably programming some of these tables in here because things are gonna be thrown off. Most aftermarket cams are gonna have a phase limiter, so we're gonna have to make some changes in the table. And then some aftermarket cams will delete the variable valve timing feature altogether, um, which for a race application is fine. For a street application, it may not be the best idea, but either way, we'll find that. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.